What's up, everybody? This is the piece um, of hornstone that gifted that was gifted to me by my friend Mike, and I did the the one video on. I actually <laughs> sat down uh, and started flaking. I grabbed this thing. Sometimes I'll just sit down and grab a biface, and I'll start start whacking on it. Uh, and I've got a bunch of bifaces laying around, so I actually picked this thing up the other day and did a little work on it. So it's a little bit further along than it was the last time you seen it. Um, but I haven't done any pressure or anything. I just did some some more direct percussion, so it's pretty pretty thinned out. I was gonna try to do a dovetail out of this, but it's getting the base is kind of getting narrow for a dovetail now. So I. Th think I might do a uh, Dalton or something I don't know if it'd be too small to be a if I took it in a little bit it would that would help widen it out a little bit I'll still try to do a dovetail maybe I'll just do a little button base dovetail or something that'll look okay should I hope if not we'll just chop it off there and start over. Finally went and bought me a new grinding wheel. I've been using the stone. I started using the stone to turn the edges and stuff um, when I was transitioning to the ABO tools and I kind of got used to it, but they don't do quite as good a job as the, the carver in them. Uh, for the copper. So, let's see, let's see. I've got a pretty good balance going on. It's, it's a little bit thick right in here. I could probably get a flake right here. Of course, I could probably take that down with pressure as well. step fracture going on up here it'll probably end up shrinking a little bit but hopefully not much I won't take this in a very little at least as possible enough talking let's get to napping I caught a 21 inch smallmouth this morning out of the Whitewater River couldn't believe it me and my buddy my buddy wanted to go trout fishing <clears throat> tailwater of the reservoir where they stock trout up there in the spring. He wanted to go try to catch some trout this morning and get a mess to smoke in the smoker. And the, the water, they weren't letting much out of the reservoir, so it was really, really low and super clear. The fish were kind of spooky and... The ones that were left, which was very few, I managed to catch one little rainbow trout. Caught one little smallmouth up there, and then we moved on downstream to where it runs into the river. And uh, stopped at my buddy's house there, and we had some night crawlers and red worms, and I was using, just really just messing around. It was getting late in the day and getting hot, and usually the fish just turn off, you know. And it starts warming up, and the sun pops out. But I caught one little channel cat, and then right next cast, I caught that smallmouth. I thought it was a nice catfish, and that thing jumped up about two feet out of the water. I about pooped my britches. I said, get the net. My buddy said, what net? We don't have a net. <laughs> I waded out about waist deep and I went to I went to grab her and she shot between my legs. Got behind me, almost pulled the hook out. Drug her up on the bank and she the line broke right the hook as soon as I got it on the bank. Okay, I guess that'll look all right. I'll end up bringing these edges in a little bit more. 
I'm going to go ahead and tidy up the symmetry and the edges a little bit before I notch this thing. Or am I just avoiding it because I'm afraid to do it? Let's just go ahead and do it. Just do it. You can do it. I posted some pictures of that fish on my Facebook page if you want to check it out. So I usually get my base pretty close. You don't want to take it in too much and make the base get too thick. Kind of thin it as you go. Land frame. Thought I was good to go. I hope I haven't been chipping out of frame. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, it sure looks like a dovetail base there, don't it? <clears throat> so this stuff's pretty soft. I think I can probably just use a horseshoe nail and punch some notches in there. Now I'll just build the rest of the point around the base. All right, that's the plan. We shall see. I've been doing some practicing with my punch notching, so. Knock on wood. I've been using copper nails and steel nails and horseshoe nails and I'll tell you what I haven't tried yet is that welding rod. I bet that would work really good. It grabs the edge real nice. Okay, so let me get a rough idea. I like to start up a little bit higher because you're always going to do some adjusting on your base. So just a little bit higher than what you think you might need. Maybe right in there. We'll see how it goes. So what I've been doing recently is just starting right in with the punch. Sometimes I'll go too far in with my pressure and I'll get it. It just won't, the, the bulb won't be right in there. If you start right out with the punch, it's immediately putting that really dished out bulb of percussion in there. Rail ya flake in there. Okay, so far, so good. Even better. Your flakes will mess you up, believe it or not. 
Sometimes you can just grab them and flip them out of there. Beautiful. Whoa. Notice I didn't hit that hard enough to, to break anything. I just hard enough to take the flake. And that took part of my base off there, but that's okay because my base won't start until right in here anyways. Go ahead and get rid of that paper thin edge here. I know how far I got to go in. sure which one I took last. Looks like this one. You guys can't see a lick of that, can you? What I'm doing is uh, just setting it right down in that dish. Right in the bottom of that bowl. See, I lessen my angle, I raise the back up. Sometimes you can make a flake go when you do that. Go ahead and get rid of that little spur there. Okay, we're coming in, we're looking good. Oh no, that don't look real good right there. I'm just trying to get one more good one. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, here we go. Start over here on this side. You see I took a part of my base off there too on this side, but there again, it, that's okay. I'll just try to punch up a little more in this other direction. This thing's getting kind of flattened out, so. All that energy focused right in the bottom of that bulb of percussion. up a little bit got some Euralia flakes stuck in there got it all right come on baby trying to get it out here on a, where you guys can see it obviously and then on my harder part of my leg See, I'm just putting the tip of that right in that bulb. And I'm hitting. Just giving it a quick pop. Popped a nice little. Notice I'm not doing any trimming or braiding. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. I 
got something kooky going on in there. See a little piece sticking out in the bottom of that notch. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to try to blow it out of there. Ooh, that wasn't good. Just try to barely. Just barely catch that thing in there. I got it out of there, but kind of crushed it. Maybe I can get one back this way now. job of filming this. Okay, I'm coming into a lot of thickness right there. Not great. I need a really good flake on that other side. So I'm going to really file a platform in there. Yeah, there's, I'm coming into a ton of thickness. Right? Whew. Man. Some tough stuff. Ain't happening. What is going on? It just seems like that should go. Try this thing. It's a sixteen penny nail. Filed down. It's got a little ledge on there. Sometimes that ledge will work well. You need to take a big flake like that. I think that one put us in business. Trying to get one back this other way. If 
I can. Just brush that edge down just a little bit. Now, I'm gonna go back to my horseshoe nail. I don't need a big flake here. Settle for any flake. Right next to the edge. Right in there. Beautiful. get one more everybody's saying don't do it dude don't do it try not to hit my phone look at that I even cleaned up a little bit of that jazz I had going on inside there. This is the key to dovetails is punching that punching your way in there as thin as you can and then you can shape you can shape the the base because they they really don't come down like this. You know they have a more of a straight notch or diagonal straight going in on both sides. Most of them anyway. There's variation to all this stuff, obviously. But, uh, okay, let's do some little pressure work. Looks like you're going to end up with a dovetail after all, Mike. So, symmetry-wise, it looks like we need to bring the tip over this way. Bring this edge in. I'll go ahead and clean clean this edge up across here. Nothing I really need to take across this side. Maybe one up here. Got it. this thing wore down to a nub. <clears throat> Can't strip these things out, so you guys don't over tighten them if you get one of these.
supposed to be working on this side. Be careful the last big dovetail I had like this. This is how I broke it doing my beveling flakes. Right at the very end. <clears throat> oh yeah, this is gonna be a beauty. Beautiful. You know, you don't have to have a real super fine tip on your copper to uh, get smaller flakes. You can do it with just making smaller contact or less contact with the edge. Mm. Okay, so that's all the flaking I'll do on this side and probably on this side. So I'll bring my edges in for my symmetry, the rest of it, by taking flakes off the back side here back side here and that'll give me my left hand bevel that I'm looking for. Work my tip out up here first. I need to move it on over. Just a couple more on this side. I knew that was going to happen. this side over here.
undercut that step fracture. I got him. Notice I'm not using any surface support. When I'm taking these beveling flakes, I just want them to run in there a little ways and stop. I'm not trying to shoot them across the piece, just uh, about an inch or so in there, or half inch. These are the little cleanup flakes because I'm not going to be sending many more in there, so I want them to look good. This thing's going to be nice. That base will shape right up. might notice I'm only pushing where the white spots are because I know the edge is dull enough there to support my pressure on the edge carry that flake through there with outstep fracturing tips usually where it gets me. <clears throat> Man, listen to that thing ring. Heck yeah, I'm glad I did decided to do a dovetail out of that. It could really come in a little more. Let me just run a few more up. A few more flakes and that'll, that should have us where we need to be here.
probably do just a little bit more touch up with maybe the buffalo horn. But uh, it's looking pretty sweet right now. I'll clean it up a little bit more. I'll go ahead and fix the space. Grab my new leather leg pad here. I love this thing. I've been using it underneath my uh, other two leg pads. It's been working out really well. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. This side needs to come up just a little bit. much just opening this one up to match this one Take your time on this part. This will make or break it. Got a little bit of extra thickness down here. I can almost take a thinning flake up through here. I'll take it. I think a smaller base will look better on this narrow of a blade. Bases are usually finished with small flakes.
got to be careful. I don't want to do take too much more, but the bases are usually ground. I just want to make sure the balance is decent. And it looks like it is. I'll get one up, a couple through there. One there. One there. I'll just shear that with my buffalo. Straighten that bottom off a little bit. Go ahead and round this ear off a little bit here. He's kind of hanging out there in the wind a little bit too much. This is what I really like this buffalo for. You can, if you take your time and go around, you can really clean these edges up. Make them look really nice. Uh, but for the sake of uh, the time of the video, make sure I can download it on the same day, or upload it. I always say download. Yeah, you know, touch this thing up a little more, but turned out pretty good, I think. I'll leave it alone before I break it. This notches look okay. See, I need to bring this one in a little bit. It's crazy. I can see that by looking in the camera a lot better than just looking down at it for some reason. I need to open this notch up a little bit more here, too. You gotta be careful, man. You get them down, work them down until you ain't got nothing left. I did it before, but sometimes they just need a few extra flakes. You can really do some fine tuning with your braider uh, when you're shaping and stuff. I think he'll be real happy with that. I know I would be. No big hinges or step fractures. Pretty clean, no crushing. And the notches, maybe just a tiny bit in that one. But after this thing, you handle it a little bit, they get oiled up and even look slicker. This stuff patinas almost instantly. 
Like within two days, you chip it and it's a different color underneath. Well, there you go, Mike. I'll get her in the mail to you, buddy. Thanks so much for that uh, material and I can't wait to get down there and hang out. Thanks, thanks again for watching, guys. I sure appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll just title this one uh, Dovetail from Gifted Hornstone Part 2 or something. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Alrighty, guys. Catch you on the next one. Y'all have a good day.